Hey guys, stay tuned. We've got the outspoken, classy theater actress, oh, and daytime living legend, Louise Sorrell in the house. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Well, hello and welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, I might have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but we have the amazingly talented Louise Sorrell in the house. Round of applause. Yay. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Um, also joining us today is... Hello, everyone. I'm Tony Moore. And I am Matthew Evan Payne. <laughs> the usual suspects. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Louis. And I, I had them play the Santa Barbara theme. That was my doing. Sorry if you wanted to were expecting the days theme, but I put my foot down. You did. <laughs> As you should. And I just thought, I wanted to share this. Um, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I wanted to tell everybody the ridiculousness that transpired on my behalf to try to get you to come oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> we love this story. And I'll say this, when I got the job at the theater, one of the things I was specifically told was to not freak out about people that come to the theater. <laughs> and you are now living proof that I don't really abide by that rule. <laughs> oh, that's me. That that is me. Let me mute that. All right, sorry about that. I know, I try. <laughs> um, no, you you came to the theater, yes. uh, the Odyssey Theater, and I w <laughs> you came with a theater critic. Sylvie Drake. Sylvie yeah. Drake. And so I was talking to Sylvie. <laughs> I don't even know if you noticed, but I was like, I'm talking to her, and then out of the corner of my eye, you were just smiling and just, you know, engaged in the conversation, and in my head, <laughs> I'm going to tell you the conversation was going on in my head. I'm having okay. a conversation with Sylvie. I have some value. I, <laughs> I might need it. I might need it. And I'm just, in my head, I'm going, is that the least right? And you were just and I was like, I'm like, oh my god, it's Louis Sorrell. Okay, hold it together, hold it together, hold it together. And then you walked, you and Sylvie walked away. Clearly, he held it together for a little bit, for a smidgen of time. And then Michael, our house manager, came into the box office, and he knows about di uh, audition days and all my connections with Days of Our Lives. And he walked in, and I was like. Oh my god, did you see who's <laughs> And he's like, Mark, hold it together, because he knows me. Um, and I did not hold it together, and I waited for you to go to the concession stand. <laughs> I remember. And I happened to come up and get myself a glass of wine, because that's what I do at work. And um, and then Michael kind of initiated us talking, and then and you were so sweet. And, so, and he freaked me out, because he was like, Mark, I don't think she liked that. I think she, I, I think you pissed her off. And I was like, I oh, know, she was so nice. I don't know, I think she really wants to come to yeah. it. And all, and all we got on our end was OMG. <laughs> you will never believe who's here. And, we're, and you know, I'm sitting there, we're sitting at home and we're like, what, what's going on? And she was like, oh my God, Louise Sorrell is here, Vivian Alamo. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get her on the show. And we're like, oh my God, I'm trying to get her. <laughs> So I did, well, when I had said, I said, well, when you come out, because I didn't have anything with me, to, you were getting ready to go into the show. Right. So I said, you know, grab my information from Michael, da, da, da. Then at like 11.30, Michael texts me, and he's like, never saw Louise, didn't give you your, her your information. I was like, but no. Yeah. I've already tweeted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already tweeted. Stay tuned for a big announcement. What am I going to do? But then you were so great, and you called the theater. And As left your security number. detail oh, was standing in front of you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Uh, no, I got a text from uh, my other coworker when I was in Toronto doing a Days of Our Lives event mm -hmm. and said, hey, Louise Sorrell called and left this number. And I was like, yes. And then I texted them, yes. and I was like, we got her back. She's coming. <laughs> it, was a, it, it was definitely a, a mix of emotions from like happy to like disappointment to yeah. like happy again. Yeah. So, so thank kind you. Kind of so like much. the political scene at the moment. Exactly. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yeah. Talk about a soap opera. We'll just pass exactly. through that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So thank you so much. So much. So much. So yes. much for being here. Oh, I'm yes. glad. You really, it's really, so nice. truly made our day. We're so yes. happy you're here. What's really funny about that though is that Mark and I, two weeks prior to Mark seeing you at his theater. Uh, Mark and I drove to the studio together to do the show, and we always talk about uh, our wish list our, of guests mm -hmm. to come see us. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we said, Vivian, Aww. we need yeah. to have Louise Sorrell come in. And I, I don't even know if it was um, 
if it was two weeks, and then Mark that said happened, she, yeah. she came to my theater. Well, and I think uh, part... I, sorry. No. Wasn't Vivian Vance you were talking about? No, no, no. 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 Heavens no. Heavens no. <laughs> no. no, no the no, one no. and only Vivian Alamein. <laughs> um, oh, shoot. What was I just going to say? It's gone. Um, I, if you guys... If you can indulge me, yes, I think we should start with Santa Barbara. Uh, by all means, I mean we because we have to start at the beginning in order to. Get yes, to we'll work our way. We'll future. get to the you guys' questions. I don't want to say the end. That sounds really horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Birth to death. Yes. <laughs> Started on a rainy night. Did either of you guys watch Santa Barbara though? No, not really. I. I it was before you. Yes. You weren't You're, born yet. Yeah, he was, he's a <laughs> I don't think uh, so. smidge younger than me. Uh, just, just, just a little Whatever. bit. Just by like I a decade or two. Yeah. Um, but no, I was saying, I was telling you this before we came in, that I Santa Barbara in Ohio would air at 3 o'clock, and I would get dropped off on the bus at 3.10, 3.5, 3.10, and I said, I can, me, my, my twin brother, and my sister just running that it was like a half block, just like, we gotta get back, we got because we didn't have DVRs, VCRs, we didn't have any of that crap, we had to watch it live. Yeah. Um, and I just remember, it was just so good, and I was talking to my house manager yesterday, before uh, coming in here today, and we were talking about Santa Barbara, and just, what, I mean, it was just, I wish you guys could have seen it, because it was just on such a different level, in my opinion, than yeah. any soap I've ever, and I've watched other ones here and there. Yeah. It was, I mean, really was just, oh. and go on YouTube and watch the old clips and stuff. Yeah. But well, that's what the great thing about YouTube. What was it like for you? Because that, was that your first? Yes. yes. Your first. I actually, I'd never even seen a soap. Wow. And uh, I was a little hesitant about doing it. But then when I heard who was doing it, from Dame Judith Anderson to Nick Coster to, mm-hmm. well, I didn't know Nancy then. Nancy Grand, who played my sister, came mm-hmm. in later. And Lane Davies, who I didn't know then, but Nick Coster and I had worked before together okay. heart to heart. And I, I read the script and I saw, I mean, I just, there was something about it that was so quirky and interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, we, we used to rehearse, they don't do this anymore, we had a lot of time to rehearse. We would come in at lunch hour and Nancy and I would improvise stuff, show it to the director and he'd say, I love it, shoot it. Nice. I mean, we were seriously working to find the, the essence of the scenes and the characters, and we had a lot of time to do that. I spent a lot of money on that show, too, mm-hmm. in the beginning, a lot of money. And then there was Dame Judith Anderson. I mean, it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. The I was so, saying, too, the, even the, if you guys go on and watch, you know, even, like, the, the, the secretaries that come into the room and the, you know, the nurse's assistant or whatever they're I mean it's just a whole nother it's like you know like they're cast in like a list I mean they aren't but they're yeah. the abilities and the and I think a lot of it had to do with the I didn't know that about your rehearsal and how, how long of a day you guys had and how much rehearsal time they got yeah. my co-worker at the theater told me was talking about the day and he was talking about that the money spent yeah the amount of time you guys had to rehearse. You yeah. Know, yeah it was all brand new mm-hmm. and it had I thought it had a class, mm, and totally wit. Uh, those writers, the Dobsons, mm-hmm. who I sort of I, we were really. I think Nick and I were the offshoot of the Dobsons. Yeah, you know, that, the two characters. They were very eccentric. She's a wonderful artist, Bridget, mm-hmm. and uh, we thought it was crazy, but we realized how clever it was and how different it was than other shows. That I mean, I had I looked at a couple of soaps, and I it was such a different feeling. Mm-hmm. It totally is. Um, yeah, I. And you also mentioned uh, Dame Judith Anderson, yeah. and I was reading also that you said that she's probably the closest thing you've had to a role model in your life. Yes, I would say Judith and my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Judith was very brazen. Mm-hmm. I loved that about her. She was bawdy. She you was, think that. for those of you that didn't watch the show, she played Minx Lockridge, Minx, yes. who was Lionel's mother. Mother, right. My, so your mother in law. Yeah. My nickname is Minx right. Payne, so. <laughs> It is? No. No, he's making stuff up. <laughs> Don't listen. No, anything he says is a lie. Unless he says I'm fabulous. <laughs> and that You're could fabulous, almost more right, be a lie. Right, yeah. <laughs> now, for, for you going into the, the soap realm and, and never having experienced it before, um, what were some of the things that you were a bit nervous about or, or hesitant about going into that? Because I know that you had done like a lot of prime time in theater mm-hmm. beforehand, which, and now going into this medium, what were... Well, the first thing is the amount of work. I mean, as soap actors work 
Matt, I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 30 pages to do the next day? Yeah. That really makes you nervous until mm -hmm. you get into that rhythm. And once you own the character, somehow or other it's easier to memorize because you know where the show is going or the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, that was the thing that made me the most nervous, is being prepared every day for 30 pages of dialogue or whatever. Yeah. And how fast, you know, shoot it, you, you do a rehearsal. We used to do this rehearsal, then an on-camera, mm -hmm. makeup and hair, mm -hmm. and then a third time in the afternoon, wow. the whole show. So you had a whole day to think about right. what you were doing and to start at four o'clock in the afternoon to tape it. Mm -hmm. So you were with it for a whole day. Now it's, it's, re it's basically almost not rehearse, shoot it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're all doing that because it's financially easier for people. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, the only nervous thing, I, that was the main thing. And the other one was actually working with Dame Judith. Mm -hmm. Wow, Yeah. that was quite something. Yeah. Now, when you have that much uh, dialogue to memorize, do you just keep running the lines over and over and over again? Do you have a coach, or is it just is it just you? Well, some people have a coach. I mean, if you happen to be married or living with somebody, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're stuck with that job. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what I was doing. Though. There were so many. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> I think I might have been alone at that point. Mm. So you just put... Stick it in your head that the night before and go over it and over it and over it. And then the next day we had a lot of rehearsal time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it somehow it's it's I always say it's fear and guilt. Mm -hmm. How do you learn those lines? Fear and guilt. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. if you don't get it, they're gonna be mad. Yeah. You're frightened. So you just get it, and there's a part of an actor's brain that seems to be able to take that material in. You can't explain it. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a mechanism that works. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I can yeah. Yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Um, one of the other things about Santa Barbara that I wanted to touch on, uh, hopefully it's okay, <laughs> um, is another thing I was reading to uh, about leaving the show, and it, it, it did, Santa Barbara kind of, as great and amazing as it was, it did kind of take a turn and kind of dwindled at the end, mm -hmm. um, and I think some of us were glad to see it go at that point. Uh -oh. um, but uh, you did say that uh, you're not a grudge holder, but Santa Barbara's case, you made an exception. Uh, and I, I, I don't remember who that was with, but you were mentioned that in an interview. I did. I did. Uh, <laughs> but I think a lot of that had to do with the. <laughs> I think a lot of it had to do with. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. They there was a storyline that they were wanting you to do that was uh -huh. upsetting, and yes. you were like, "I'm not going to do that," and that's yes. kind of where it ended. Well, it's over now, so I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, they turned this wonderful character into an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and I said, "Why would you do that?" Yeah. It was a way to get her off, obviously. And um, I went to the crew and I said, if it ever says a bottle of vodka or whatever, don't put it in the set, please. And I said, I just, I, I love that character so much. Mm -hmm. that, so whenever it says she's drinking, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I know that's bad manners as an actor. Mm -hmm. But I just, it hurt me, you know, that they would take this wonderful character and just obliterate her. Mm -hmm. And I basically did say to them, I think this is terrible what you've done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I also injected a little French um, <laughs> <laughs> into some scenes that basically said how I felt. Mm. And, and then I did terrible things like... <laughs> <laughs> I was going on to... One life to live. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you only have one life to live. Uh, <laughs> and all my children are, and I just, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm a brat. Such a rebel you are. I am. Were I, those lines, uh, did they go to air? Yes. Oh, wow. And the French went to France. Because, you know, Santa Barbara is so huge in France. Mm -hmm. and, and it went to France, and some people, I have some friends over there, and they said, that was very interesting. What you did. Yeah. I mean, you know, and nobody asked me. Nobody said, "What is she saying?" Right, right. They just let me do it. Yeah. So I thought, well, if if you're gonna let me do it, I'll yeah, do it. Well, you have to get over the grudge. I, 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 it's too complicated to get into. But the, taking that character away was, I thought, really sad. Silly. No. How long did you play Augusta? Well, I did mm. two years. Then I left. I think it was two years. Because I went to New York to do One Life to Live. Mm. And then I came back for a year. Okay. They brought me back for a year and, and then threw me off. Yeah. 
Santa Barbara was actually filmed in Los Angeles, correct? Yes. Oh yeah, right uh, where it became the Tonight Show oh. for a while. Stage oh, Eleven, I think it was. Yeah. Oh. Right near Days of Our Lives. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. In that okay. same yeah. Burbank Studios. Yeah. Yeah. It was Burbank on Studios our sta on yeah. st Santa Barbara's stage became, I think, the Tonight Show for mm -hmm. a while. Oh wow. Oh, nice. That's There's a lot of history there. And yeah. now it's Burbank Studios, Burbank not, Studios. not NBC right. Studios anymore. And Days is still yeah. there, though, right? Days is yeah, still yeah. there, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, so now from going from... I'm, this, I thought of this on the way here. I was just curious. So when you are done, now done with uh, Santa Barbara and you've done One Life to Live, when you are... A pro, I don't, I'm just curious. Were you approached by Days? We want you to come? Or was it, we're creating this character and I want to audition for this? Uh, no, what happened was somebody, a friend of mine was working on Santa Barbara and she called me, she said, you know, there's a role coming up on Days. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, I was a little down from what happened. <laughs> right. So I said, okay, and then my, I guess, I went in and met with Ken Corday and who was then, uh, the producer then, he's got Al Raven. And we talked and that was it. And I, they said, well, we're going to uh, test some women. Mm -hmm. And I said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't mean it in a yeah. right. nasty way at all. Yeah. I just said, oh, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. I guess they tested somebody and then they called. Yeah, oh, okay. And I loved the camera. I mean, they said something to me about liaison dangereuse. And I thought, oh, mm. that sounds really fun. Mm -hmm. The character being kind of like that. And then Michael Sabatino... Yes. My nephew, mm -hmm. we, we would be working in tandem, sort of mm -hmm. like that. So it was intriguing. Yeah. Now, I, I read that when you came on to Days, um, you signed for, uh, a year contract, but then, like five months later, mm. you were let go. Um, was there, is there No, a, that's not That's, at all that's the case. not correct? No. I signed, I don't remember if it was for a year, mm -hmm. and then what happened was the character caught on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where they thought they were going to let the character go right uh there was an event you know so feeling that she just was one dimensional mm -hmm. character who was out to just do terrible things to people right and they had a couple of things that they wrote early on that i remember that was played in an elevator mm -hmm. and it was with Deborah Adair. Deborah Adair. Oh my God, I, I remember my notes. that. Deborah, I love Deborah. <laughs> love Deborah. And we got yeah. to play a very, you know, personal scene about my past and how I walked in on my then lover or whatever, um, and how heartbroken I was and mm -hmm. the damage that had been done. Mm -hmm. You have to know a little bit of that about a character. Or you just right. think they're, you know, yeah. Yeah. They're just one dimensional. <clears throat> so I liked being able to play that as mm -hmm. much as the, the comedy. Of course. Because in between, whatever you do, you just do it. But then you have to add in all those, you know, funny moments and silly moments and be foolish and all yeah. the other things that make a character. Yeah. Where you had that yeah. Boris and Natasha type relationship with Yvonne. Yvonne. Oh, he drove me crazy. <laughs> I, got, I actually have a T-shirt. I don't know if I can say this. But uh -huh. I got a, a sweatshirt or something. It said... Um, because he always said, Madam, you know, you're going. Yes, so yes. I got a sweatshirt that said, Madam feels like shit today. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, Yvonne, <laughs> you know, he, I, it worked. That it combination did. worked. I still talk to him. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. He was, in spite of himself, yeah. <laughs> he was wonderful. And I, for, for <laughs> me, I, I remember that, that relationship that, that you guys had. And it was, it was so great just to see, like, this... This duo, this this woman who would come up with these outrageous plans, and then you had the guy that's like, okay, well let's you know let's yeah. do it, let's make it happen. And but then when you came back to the show, uh, you had a new sidekick, Gus, mm -hmm. um, and I think fans were a little not sure trepidatious. Yeah, we were yeah. we were kind of like, well, where is Yvonne? <laughs> um, would you like to share how you felt about? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't put me in that position. He was a lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. I think they got used to you know eight years mm -hmm. of two people together, and it's always hard to, to you know switch on people and say accept this person mm -hmm. in the position of a, of yeah. a character that's been established. Yeah. But he came back yes. for one day. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well. You know, it, it's what it is. You you have no say so in those things. And yeah, he was a lovely guy. You know, mm -hmm. it's just that I think the fans we're, had we a were so used mindset. to mindset. Yes, I thought he was coming back. Yeah, so I didn't. 
I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, we didn't either. We yeah. were just we were hoping they were like, "Who's this guy that's like falling in love with Vivian?" It's not Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? Yeah. When I was getting ready this morning, I YouTubed the the scenes with uh, Carly in mm-hmm. the in the coffin, and <laughs> Yvonne was talking to her, and she yeah. was begging and pleading for her life, and she said, "I'll be in your every dream, please. I know you have a soul." And you can mm. see that he's about to give in, and Vivian walks in uh, and grabs the walkie from him. Yeah. And pretty much tells her, <laughs> good luck down there. <laughs> <laughs> the one okay. thing I think of when I think of Louise Sorel is you rolling around on the dirt. Mm-hmm. Just with her underneath you. Mm-hmm. How crazy and so well played that was. What were those days like? Well, I, who did I tell We were you talking about it earlier. Uh huh. Uh, they, they wanted me, I'll just say what happened. Yeah. They wanted me to jig on the grave uh, and I couldn't get that. So I said, <laughs> I don't jig. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not jigging. So they said, well, what do you want? By that time they were fed up with me. They said, what do you want to do? I said, I have no idea. So at lunch, I said, I'll work it out. So at lunch hour, I walked around this piece of earth that was on the set and kept thinking, what, what kind of, what? So something, just that thing came to me. I did a thing with the flower. She loves me. She loves me. Not. I have mm. no idea what that meant. But I, anyway, <laughs> I did it. And then I thought, I'll just throw myself on the grave and go into some over-the-top crazy moment because Vivian had that liberty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when it came to shooting it, they said, the director said, just back the cameras up. <laughs> I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> this is the truth, and I'm sure he will back me up. And yeah. I, they said, okay, five, four, three, two, one. And I went in, she loves me, she loves me not. And I went in a circle, and I guess I threw myself down on the... Mm-hmm. And then when they called cut, there was like this deadly silence. <laughs> the crew was like, what the... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know it was going to go viral, right. practically. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember they did show it a few times at the... To- the Emmy and the Soap Opera Digest, Digest Awards, Digest Awards. Mm-hmm. and I thought wow that w- I mean I have no idea of what that was I don't yeah. think anybody did yeah, yeah. well sometimes but, you have to trust your actors and that they know what they're doing yes. yeah well they were <laughs> they gave up on me they just said just don't talk that. to her just put the just camera really, on and yeah. we don't know what she's you know yeah I actually appreciated the fact that they gave me that freedom mm-hmm. at times to do that you mm-hmm. know they trusted me at the same time, they wanted to kill me. <laughs> yeah. And you won Soap Opera Digest Award several times for yeah. the five role. Times. Five mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Five times. Yeah. Wow. I never won anything in my life. I really, I mean, I, I, well, I got a drama desk thing, but that I was think. while I was doing days. I was doing a play at the Odyssey mm-hmm. with yeah. Lois Nettleton. Perfect Ganesh. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lois. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I got a lot of awards. I was amazed. Yeah. I never in my life gotten an award well you do such fantastic work and and what one thing that i can appreciate just you know sitting with you and and also reading about you is that you're you're very vocal about your characters and and how they they should be portrayed and and how they should be and i think you know as actors we we sometimes can lose sight of that when you know we're on a job and they just tell you something and you know in your gut you don't feel right about it but you just kind of do it, and I just appreciate someone being like, nope, yeah. this character should be played this way, or yeah. you're just like, I'm very yeah. unhappy about that. Well, there is also the fact that, you know, you're hired to do mm-hmm. a job mm-hmm. and to do what they give you, Yeah. and I appreciate that. I really respect that, but then when it's, I can't help it, you know, it just, mm-hmm. there are times when you just say, you're, you're hurting this character, Yeah. You know? and you feel like you sort of own that character, and you, you know, at the same time, you're supposed to do what they ask you to do. Yeah. So it's a hard line, and I probably have hurt myself that way because uh, there was another thing that happened in Santa Barbara, which had to do with a rape, mm-hmm. and I went up to the producers because they were having me dash Nichols. Yeah, respond to the rapist, and was he raped my sister? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, I can't do. You can't do this. Yeah. This is my sister who came sobbing into my arms, mm-hmm. and now I'm going to be sexually attracted to this it was kind of like that yeah and i know she wanted she was fear she was furious with me and i walked out and her the producer's daughter was working there and i looked and i said your mother wants to kill me (laughs) (laughs) i said yes she does (laughs) and um 
she did. And they did cut the story. They yeah. did. They did change it. So I guess <laughs> woof, woof. we've got a visitor here that, in the studio. That was somebody who Mark's excited. Producer yelling at me. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I probably that was not right on my part, but I yeah. couldn't. I couldn't help it. Yeah. Now, one one thing that I I recall um, from Vivian was just her. Her very oh, yeah, uh, yeah. take him out of the room. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Her very uh, yeah, eclectic right. way of, of dressing. There there was a, a lot of like sometimes yeah. Vivian would walk in a room and you're like, hmm, we decided to wear that today. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the, fe- the, the hat. feather hat, yes. the black yes. feather hat. That was a great hat. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I well, I have to put that all on Richard Bloor. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, well, not all, but no, I didn't have. You know, the things were just given to you. You're, yeah. you know, you're not really making those choices they mm-hmm. just and I think he did some wonderful stuff yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I mean I I can't remember anything but he really he they used to spend a lot of money on stuff mm-hmm. and it was really wonderful but <laughs> I don't know what they're doing now but I I, I don't know I thought it was sort of fun yeah it was the, and I felt like it, it went with your character you know to ha- to have these just interesting looks yeah from from time to time. Yeah. Did you keep anything? Oh, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> they already I know love that it. Story. I love that everything leads to a great that's story. That's another story. <laughs> Guess where all the clothes went? <laughs> In a very large trunk. Of the car. Is that something? Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm just just popped in my head. Is that something when you're negotiating a contract that you could say? I couldn't. I had never yeah. thought of saying that. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure some people mm-hmm. are in that position. position. I just. Took them. <laughs> <laughs> they do that though. Yeah. I think they, whatever. I mean, what were they gonna do with them? Hang them upstairs and get dusty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. At least use them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, share the wealth. Exactly. <laughs> now, in 1999, your contract was coming to an end over at Days of Our Lives. Did you decide not to renew your contract? No. Or were you let go? Yes, I was blown <laughs> to the wind. <laughs> like paper on the Titanic. <laughs> How did it come about where you decided to go back in 2009? I didn't. They called me. Oh. Yeah. I had left L.A. I packed up. I sold my car, gave up my apartment, and moved to New York. And this lovely man who was on the producing, Gary Tomlin, called me at home and said, hi. And I said, oh, my God. <laughs> Why would he be calling me? And I, was, I said, how's the dog? <laughs> I, said, I, just, I said, no, no, this can't be happening. Anyway, he said, we're, we're going to bring Vivian back. Mm-hmm. And that's, I didn't have anything to do with it. They just yeah. called and said, we're going to bring her back. Yeah. And I thought, I have to do this. I love the character. Love yeah. Well, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know. Well, I think fans are definitely pushing for a return of of Vivian. Um, would you be open again to returning I, if, if I don't asked know. again? I th- I think I may have <laughs> done myself in, <laughs> as they say. Uh. I, I I'm not against it, but I don't mm. think anybody will be calling soon. Oh no. <laughs> well, I don't know. We we here at at. Dish and Days and After Buzz TV, we have a we have a way with uh, with starting things and getting people back on. So cross your fingers. We've gotten a couple of people. Well, we like to think we got Who them can, back on. Can yeah. I live with one of you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yes. Have a home. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a home yet. Yeah. You, can, you, you know, have a home anytime you yes, come to LA. Exactly. Yes, yeah. you do. I live just around the corner, which is not too far from Burbank Studios. That's true. It all it all works out. So <laughs> okay. you are you are more. We'll than be welcome. fighting over. I was just like, yeah. no, I get Louise tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You have a dog to go with it. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Well, and it'll be great practice because I told you how I was That's possibly right. thinking about a He's dog. So about a dog. I can babysit Wolf Wolf for right. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look yeah. how the, that all works out. Now you just need days to call. <laughs> just, just those minor details. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I had I had this idea. Wait, I've never done this before, but mm. I I thought of I'm I picked five people from Days and five people from Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and I thought I'm going to go through them quickly. And you just say the first thing that comes to your mind oh when I God. say their name. With my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that's Which why I, I thought it would be yes. fun. <laughs> I, I think that's totally oh, why Mark yeah. decided to do this. We're going we're gonna to sit here and pray for you. Okay. So I, I'll start with Santa Barbara. Yes. Because that's my love. <laughs> um, 
I feel like you're cheating on Days of Our Lives when you say that. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. We'll get to Days. All right, so Santa Barbara, here we go. Nancy Lee Gron. I love her. Uh, Dane Judith Anderson. Mad for her. Nicholas Coster. I, well, he's like my soulmate. Robin oh. Matson. Ah. <laughs> well, Should we just leave it there? Ah. No, I, I mean, she's a character. I, we've, had, we've had a lot of fun together. She's, she's a character. I like her. And Judd Allen. Jed, I love... Oh, Jed. He's a sweetie. He's a sweetie, <laughs> really. Okay. Now for days. Allison Sweeney. Well, you know, Allison came on the show when she was very young. Right. And I actually took her... We were going to the Soap Opera Digest or something awards in New York, and I helped her and got her all dressed up and everything. So I felt like her, a sort of maternal ah, feeling. Maternal. Okay. Uh, Crystal Chappelle. I love... Well, Crystal is just like nobody. She's so beautiful. And she's a very good actress. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, she is. Just, she's terrific. John Aniston. John is, John is a very dry-witted, sweet, gentle soul. <laughs> but, I mean, just, We get that. Yeah. <laughs> that comes across. Uh, Yvonne Javera. Yvonne. Ah. <laughs> Yvonne. Well, as I said, Madam feels like shit today. <laughs> How can you not love him? Right. Yes. He was just this. What, what, he was this. Lo, this thing that arrived on the set every day. He said, "Do we have any lines today? <laughs> <laughs> we have twenty pages gone. What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god! But it worked. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, it worked. And one last one, Suzanne Rogers. She's a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. She, we we speak once in a while. She's yeah. called me in New York. Yeah, she's a. She's like an, a throwback to something. You know, she's from an old. The other kind of gentle world. Mm-hmm. I, I just think she's lovely. She's like something from an, from the early days. I don't mean looks or anything. She's mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But she has that quality of uh, the old films mm-hmm. to me. See, I feel like you have that same quality. I do too. Yes. That's yes. why I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, Tennessee Williams, I can't believe this, but it's true. He said, hey, there was a quote about me and I had never met the man. Oh, wow. He said when I was watching her on some... Mm-hmm. He watched television. Mm-hmm. He said, I was thinking of, her. she should have been in the old RKO days or mm. something like that. And I thought, oh, yeah. that's why I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> I have a has-been yeah. at another time. Well, no. I was oh. thinking, too, after speaking, with, no. <laughs> speak, <laughs> after speaking with you at the Odyssey before this, you know, between then and now, um, and watching the old episodes and stuff back, I was just like, so much of, I mean, I'm not saying you're like Vivian or Augusta per se, but just your who you are is just such. Like, I'm like, that's Louise. Like every time I was watching, I'm like, that's just Lu- that she's just that badass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like you're, you're a badass, Louise. Not to, you know what I mean? I'm like, I feel like you just bring that that quality to it. Mm-hmm. That just being who you are, and yeah. just and your family and your your upbringing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's just. My mother. Yeah, your mother, mother and your father was a film producer, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because even yeah. in that moment when when you mentioned Yvonne and you went, "Oh, Yvonne!" Like suddenly I was like, "Vivian." Yeah, you, <laughs> you said Yvonne, and I yeah. leaned yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I didn't know whether to go in like a ha huh, or oh my god, what plan does she have for me? <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna be poisoned mm-hmm. with like a comb or like what's mm-hmm. gonna happen? You asked a few yeah. moments ago about what uh, Vivian fans love about the character of Vivian, yeah. what draws them in. And for me, it is the performance. Yeah. Every yeah. single oh. time, 100%. And mm-hmm. so Thank you. that's yeah. the answer. One yeah. of the old clips from, sorry, I keep going to Santa Barbara, but I you've sparked it now like I'm wanting yes. to watch old episodes. But there was a scene with you, and I think the character's name was Peter, who's from the early, early, early yes. episodes. He comes in and he's talking to you about Joe Perkins, your gardener. Yes. And there, and I, I meant to, I completely forgot till just this moment, but I was going to save the clip to play because there's just a moment. And these are the things that I, as a actor and director and stuff that I love so much are the moments when you're not speaking and there was something you did in the, like you're having a conversation and he said something you didn't even say anything. Just the way you sat back at the couch. I literally just lost it. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I just, I feel like so much of that is missing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, even on, you know, not putting down anybody on days, you know, but 
I just feel like so much of that is what I loved about Vivian. Those moments of just your reactions to things mm-hmm. and the moments between the talking. And you can mm-hmm. see the wheels spinning yes. for Vivian, her thoughts, what will she do next? Yeah. 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 Did you just to go back to Santa Barbara, did you did you see the epi- the the whole story sequence, which is the Dobsons again, where I went blind yeah, I remember that. I remember uh, that. That was so funny. It was so creative. Mm-hmm. And Ronnie Shell played, the, I mean, he's a comedian anyway, so mm-hmm. we couldn't get through anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm not supposed to see what's going on mm-hmm. between Nick and Ron Shell. And they take me to the, uh, what is it, up, um, the, what's, William Mond of Hearst mm-hmm. Castle, okay. mm-hmm. supposedly. Yeah. And the whole thing was shot on the stage where the audience watched me climb up a ladder to supposedly thinking I'm on an airplane Mm -hmm. and then he flies me to the Hearst Castle and there's supposedly rooms full of furniture and there's no furniture (laughs) and he said this is the blue couch with the thing and I'm going oh it's but I I know now I have my sight back but I don't tell them Uh, okay I never laughed so hard (laughs) oh my god that whole sequence was so brilliant on their part it was so creative I just there are moments that come to me about those two shows that were so much fun to play. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Actors get to free get free and are able to just invent things and that's yeah. the best part. What about on um on days? What was a, a favorite storyline or, or moment uh during your time as, as Vivian? Um that's a good question because it, it there was so it much. Was, yeah, there's so there's you had so much to work with <laughs> and so many things happen. Uh. Well, certainly working with uh, Crystal mm-hmm. and John. I loved working with John. There's yes. a little bit of a Noel Coward thing going on yeah. there, mm-hmm. which was fun because mm-hmm. he's very dry. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, still is. Very, very much so. Still yes. is. He very gets my quote dry. of the week a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I think possibly this, the, the, the burying alive thing was mm-hmm. great fun. And, and a lot of things with, hello, Here is with, with uh, John Aniston. Yeah. Um, that's where most of my work was, and, and Michael Sabatino, yes. who's such a sweetheart. Yeah. Uh, those were the people I worked with mostly. Of course. So. Lisa Mims in our chat room wants to know that if Vivian were to come back to Salem, who would you want to take revenge on? Mm. So many possibilities. <laughs> Not as nobody in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! I, I suddenly picture, yeah. I suddenly picture you on set and going, my revenge is on you. Yeah. And it's the person but like behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or up in the booth. Yeah. And we're like, who is she talking to? <laughs> <laughs> is it not Carly? Is Carly coming? <laughs> oh, I was gonna say there was another uh, montage I saw on YouTube with you and Crystal Chappelle that was so good. Mm-hmm. You go to you're there you're in. Um, the scene takes place in Bo's, Bo and Hope's house, mm-hmm. um, and it's you and Crystal, and it's just this banter back and forth, and, and, and she, you said, <laughs> I think it's time we should bury the hatchet, and she's like, oh no, please let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just all this stuff back and forth, and if you guys look for it on, on YouTube, because it was, it was so, I don't even really remember it yeah. happening, per yeah. se. Uh, it might have been, you know, there were times where I was, you know, watched it. Drinking. Regularly, yeah, and <laughs> I drank a lot in those days. Yes. Um, but it just there was just I loved those those moments between you and Crystal and Crystal yeah. and well yeah. you and pretty much you and anybody, anybody. <laughs> that yeah. you and paper bag would have been <laughs> dynamite. Yeah, yeah. Now you you've worked with with her uh, online shows, yes. uh, Beacon Hill, uh, Beacon Hill. Yes. Yeah, and I, I wish it. Would, I just saw her. I was up on up in uh, Pismo where they live. Yeah. And I saw her, and I said, it's too bad that didn't pan out, because yeah. they, the women are interested in bringing it back, but she's mm-hmm. working on Venice now Venice, again. yes, yes. Yeah. And we're actually going to have Crystal come in this Wednesday yep. to, for, oh, for an interview, so it's, all, oh boy, I, I had to make sure it was separate, because fans would have gotten a little nervous on another burial part two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone would have wrote in and said, oh no, please don't let her bury her again. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have any like very strange or random fan encounters during your your soap times? Cause no. F- no? Um, because I think they were scared. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're so polite and yeah. wherever you go, they're so, they're like, are yeah. you... 
are you, you know, and they're very, very nice. Nobody's, mm -hmm. I've never had crazy fans. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, Laura Coslow oh. was saying something similar <laughs> that when she did her first fan event, there were people that were. They, she said it wasn't they were being mean; they just wouldn't come to her. Yeah. Because she, they thought Intuitive. that she was going to be mean. Yeah. yeah. And she kept going, "No, I'm nice. Yeah. Please <laughs> come talk to me." You know. So. Yeah, they relate to you sometimes. Is mm -hmm. that you know? Yeah. Is that character? Is that character? And they kind of Hesitate. Yeah. Louise actually had a crazy fan encounter at Odyssey Theater. Just yes. Yes, that's so, about yes. About that one. That one. That was the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, we, we had Deidre Hall here not too long ago, and I feel like you're another good person to ask this to. Um, I feel like when when new people come to the show, new actors, younger actors, uh, new to the business, new to the industry, come in, when they have scenes with her, I feel like there's, you can, it's intimidating. Yes. And I feel like you're another person that would be intimidating and you're like oh I just, and i don't think you know that necessarily that they're scared of you but they want to be on your level they want to step it up and they it makes them nervous regard. have you ever had an experience where you felt that and you, how did you deal with it if well, you did no because usually i go and talk to whoever it is because oh, okay. i think you have to bring them in yeah. you know you may you have, because it's a horrible feeling to be frightened in those situations mm -hmm. plus once they talk to me they say oh. <laughs> She's a puppy with <laughs> wagging her tail. I mean, I'm just not like that. Yeah, you know, I'm very, yeah. I, I mean, frankly, I talk to everybody. I mm -hmm. just don't, I, I don't have this sort of, you know, kind of thing, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. no, not I'm at all. I'm sure somebody felt that way, but I try not to do that. I don't, it's not my nature. Just, yeah. It's too hard to come on the show. Yeah. I feel, oh my God, you know, will I remember my lines, let alone trying to work with, with somebody, somebody that, you know, yeah. is intimidating you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not good. Now, I know you came from a, a theater background um, and being a lover of the theater. Um, Enter, which you've never come to my theater, by the way. Well, I'm coming. I just, <laughs> you know, I don't like to tell you when I'm coming. I just oh, you want to surprise up. me? Yeah, 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 gotcha. Yeah, it's gotcha. on my schedule and list of things to do, I promise. <laughs> Um, but what what's your favorite theater production or, or musical that like that one that <laughs> That's you a tough one. that you always just go see? I know I have my my ones that like anytime anyone's doing a production of it, I'm like I gotta go see it. Yeah. But what's what's yours? Wait a minute. What's yours? Mine. Uh, <laughs> mine is Dream Girls because mm -hmm. I would love, even though I really can't, but in my mind. <laughs> He is. You I never would, know. I, right? Exactly. You I never would, know. Well, it's. I would love to play either Dina Jones or or Effie, or if I could play both, I would play Effie in Act One and Dina in Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Exactly. <laughs> and my my other favorite one is is uh, more of a recent musical is Legally Blonde the musical. I mm -hmm. love that musical so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm because I'm old. I'm a th I throw back to West Side Story. Mm. Which yes. I, I was with somebody who was in West Side you know, at the Winter Garden for mm -hmm. about a year. Mm -hmm. And I lived that show. And, mm -hmm. I, and the yeah. music just, as soon as I hear the first note, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. finished. Yeah. So I go back to some of the older shows. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, I actually just did a play that uh, where... Ten women did twenty-five characters, mm. wow. men and women and mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Wow! And it was I remember Mama. Mm. It's a gorgeous production. Uh, we did it in New York with Barbara Barry, and mm. one one of the actresses is on Orange Is the New Black. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know that was the last kind of fabulous theater I did. But you asked a different question. Uh, yeah, I I go back to She Loves Me. Mm -hmm. um, West Side Story in terms mm. of musicals, mm -hmm. of course, any of the great, My Fair Lady or oh, yeah. any of those. And recently, um, one of the things that always stayed with me was War Horse, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure was here. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. I just thought that was magnificent. Yeah. And, um, but there's a lot of, there's so much, I don't even know if I could yeah. Yeah. break there's it so down. Many, there's yeah. so many. Have things. you had a favorite role of, of your own that hands down... Theater was a no. Uh, oh, it could be theater, just film, overall. TV. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of stuff that was fun, and um, I love doing the Perfect Ganesh mm -hmm. with Lois Nettleton. It's a wonderful play. I, you know, there's so much out there, and I don't, I don't feel like I've really had that moment of bliss about mm -hmm. something. It's it's a hard business, you know. Mm -hmm. You sort of work at what you can get, and. Um, you just don't know. Maybe it'll still come up. Yeah. But I've always enjoyed whatever I I did. Lion in Winter with George C. Scott, mm -hmm. Colleen Dewhurst. 
that was pretty amazing yeah. you know, at the time that yeah. it happened because of what was going on in their private life. Mm -hmm. And that you remember those things for yeah. the energy of it and the sort of scary possibilities there. Yeah. So And then I worked with Boyer on Broadway in the West End. Mm -hmm. And those are just great wow. memories for me. Yeah. I'm not saying they were great roles, but right. just, the whole thing, yeah. the experience was great. Yeah. With your... Um, this is always interesting to me because you grew up in Hollywood with a Hollywood family and stuff like that. Do you remember, or was there a time where you kind of was realized who your family was and what that this industry that's so admired and revered mm -hmm. that you were like living that that some you know what I mean? Like, no. is, was there ever a moment where you were, or you like, this is just. Much later, Family. when I went to New oh, York, yeah. and people said, oh, your father was a film producer? I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. To me, it was just he went to work every day. Right, right. right. And my mother was basically at home, and she was a pianist. Mm -hmm. and, a, and so my world was my father went to work, and my mother was home, and mm -hmm. she played the piano and mm -hmm. painted and things. And I, I just, you know, I left home when I was 18 mm. to go to do what I thought it was about, which is New York and the neighborhood playhouse and... I was very lucky. I got my first Broadway show and my first reading. Yeah. Nice. And so then later on, people said, well, where are you from? I said, Hollywood High. <laughs> you know, my father was a film producer. I went, oh, that's impressive. You know, yeah. I, mean, I, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, a couple of actresses I heard say that. Jane Fonda, I think. Mm -hmm. You grow up in this. And yeah. it's sort of just what you grow up it's, in. Yeah. It's very ordinary to you. Yeah. Was there so, uh, somebody when you were little that like maybe came over or you went with them somewhere that you met and you were like, oh my, God. Oh my gosh, there's so-and-so. No. No. <laughs> Once I was at lunch at the commissary with my father and Shelley Winters was doing uh, a movie with him. Mm -hmm. And she, I, this is, I had no idea who she was. You know, yeah. But I just remember she took a, she took a tooth out of her mouth with her tongue. <laughs> she thought that would amuse me. Yeah. I, I never forgot it. It yeah. scared me. Really. Right. <laughs> that I remember. And then once, I think, Johnny Ray. Remember John, the singer, Johnny Ray? I know the name. So I don't you, know the name. You yeah. weren't yeah. born. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a, a well-known singer. And I think uh. he sang for my father's movie or something. And he was at our house for dinner, whatever. And he had a hearing aid. Mm-hmm. At those days, there was a wire from the ear to the thing. And we had a parakeet. Mm -hmm. The parakeet sat on his, unbeknownst to him, on his shoulder and chewed through the hearing aid wire. I don't know why I remember that. It's the most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that it was like, who were these people? Yeah. I didn't know who they were. They were right. just adults in my life. Yeah. Right? Um, so I never really had that. You know, I think I'm, Rock Hudson lived up the street. And he did a movie for my father. but. Of you just didn't relate just to that. Yeah. I was just busy trying to get out of my home and get to New York. <laughs> Did you now many parents who are who are in the business usually kind of dis you know tell their kids like no there's no way you're going to get involved in in this industry. Were your parents supportive of you wanting my, to get into my it? My mother was. My yeah. mother cuz she was an actress and mm -hmm. she had been signed as the new Garbo mm -hmm. in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father of course because you know it's your father. Yes. Was, he was not thrilled yeah. right, at all. Um, but my mother really pushed me out of the net. She said, you can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was gone. Yeah. yeah. And she helped me when I was in high school and college with roles that they were giving me that were insane for me to do. You right. know, old women and yeah. things that I just would come home crying and saying, this is what they're giving me. I can't do this. And yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. And she was ferocious about it because mm -hmm. that's what she really wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. So I had that help was really good for me. Now, was there ever a nudge to your father like, hey, you're working on this film. You can put me in. If oh, you... no. Never? No, because I left when I was 18. Yeah. Mm. He put me. <laughs> 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 he did put my mother and I in a movie called, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. Prehistoric Women. <laughs> 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 and my mother in a loincloth. With full Hollywood makeup, right. all of the women had, and they did this sort of primitive dance around a fireplace. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh. And I was a prehistoric child. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of it. It was a leather sarong mm -hmm. sort of thing yeah. with my hair down to here, and uh. Texas dirt is what they used to, to make your skin look mm, like, yes. like you were prehistoric or something. Yes. And then there was this 
Iceland man who was seven foot eight, wow. who was oh a prehistoric something. Yeah. And I have a picture. I'm standing under his arm, and I come up to about here. He's, yeah. Somewhere I have that in one of my albums, but those oh were the God. movies that my father put me. Yeah. <laughs> women. Uh, we were just getting a we're getting a note that we have to start wrapping, but I wanted before we go, I wanted you. I've been looking at your one two four necklace oh, there, you. and I was just curious if you would uh, tell everybody uh, quickly, I will about tell you. what this is about. That's my mother's birthday, January twenty fourth. I'm involved with a group of women who have decided they must do something for the women, the young girls of Chibok. Uh, Nigeria who were abducted by Boko Haram mm -hmm. and the news came out and nothing was done 276 girls were lifted out of their school in the middle of the night and taken in trucks through the dark jungle mm -hmm. and some many have been raped God knows what's happened to them mm -hmm. so we thought we have to, you, you got to find some way to help so a group of us are trying to they're about 57 escaped by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually Google them to hear their stories, and when you hear their stories, it's unbearable. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, this is for awareness, basically. Mm -hmm. And the, there's a jeweler who makes these, are very inexpensive, mm -hmm. and he will make up a, a, a charm like this for you, either if you want to spend a little more, you can do it all gold. And he wanted to help us. Mm -hmm. So he, the money that he makes on those, most of it goes to the girls. Some are, are in Texas, some are in Virginia being fostered. Mm -hmm. I mean, the brave, the, these women, what they go through. And then they try to go back if they've, been, if they've escaped to their home in Chibok. Mm -hmm. And of course, the villagers pull away from them because they've been damaged. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. heartbreaking, and that's just one of the many stories. But and you can choose your number? You just call, it's Bring Back Our Girls, and you can go online okay. for this. And okay. they'll tell you exactly what it is and why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little charm. I've Several people have bought them, yeah. or I buy yeah. them for them, because yeah. I want them to wear them. It's it's so, I haven't taken this off in two years. Wow. Oh, wow. And my girl's name is La Raba. La Raba. Oh. And we meet at the UN at this chapel there, and mm -hmm. we do prayers for them, and we march on the, um, the embassy, mm -hmm. the Nigerian embassy, mm -hmm. and say, bring back our girls. Yeah. yeah. Because you have to help, you know. You're a talented actress and a yes. wonderful person, and it has oh. been an absolute pleasure having you in the studio. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you for joining us. And you have to let us know um, the information where people can purchase those, um, and we can post yes, them on our, on our social media and I stuff, will. and I'm sure fans will be happy and gracious to, to yeah. purchase them. It's a nice and gift, too, for someone. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being yeah. here. Well, thank you. We're going to go you. down the row. Are, are you on Twitter? No, yeah, no. No, I'm no. not. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll, but you, well, you can. We'll, we'll, we'll get you set up we'll on Twitter. Set, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but let's tell everybody where we can find us on social media if they're looking to find out more about what's going on. Here. Well, of course, you guys can find me on all social media platforms at Lounge with Tony or my website, loungewithtony.com. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Matthew E. Payne. And you know me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Lorraine Love, L-O-R-A-Y-N-E-L-O-V-E. That'll be a fun afternoon for you. Google that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and of course, Audition Days stuff. And Audition Days, uh, underscore Audition Days, on Twitter, Twitter, Facebook. Audition Days on Facebook. You know how to find us. Yep. And if you wouldn't mind, as we're leaving, will you give a shout out? This is the guy that I was telling you was tweeting me. Oh, yes. Ron. And I don't think he got to watch it live, but he's a huge fan. And um, if you would give him a shout out to Ron, I don't, if you want to attempt that last name. <laughs> That's really interesting. Klopfenstein is yeah, what I'm thinking. That's really interesting. Ron Klopfenstein. Hello, Ron. Um, <laughs> here I am with all these wonderful men. And um, I'm so glad. Are you watching? Is he watching? Uh, I think he's he watching post. I don't think yeah. he's watching oh, yeah. live. Okay. So. so watch post. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll bury you alive. That's right. <laughs> and on that note, thank you guys so much. And thank you so much for being here. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.